Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. And we are here with day three of the Sherry Shepherd Show. And as her guest uh, host, she had it was Robin Thick. And I think his name was, last name was Ho, H-O-U-G-H. Don't know what was really going on there. But, um, I think I got the wrong picture of them, but my daughter downloaded them for me. So, I don't know what she was doing. But it's okay. That was, uh, Michael and Ashley Darby. I think they should have gotten, um, what do you call it, a divorce by now? But anyway. Sherry was talking about how Layla uh, Milan came in town and wanted to shake things up. And her super ex uh, well, executive producer had showed them around town. And she was talking about uh, how they was having a good time and twerking here, twerking there. And yes, Robin Thicke and Derek Ho was on the show today. And... Um, Going back to Lala Anthony, they went out, partied, had a good time. And Sherry was saying something about, you know, she had the big money or whatever. And she, uh, the man came and tried to collect payment because they had been there for a while. And they had ate a lot and they had drunk a lot. And so while her uh, buddies were out on the floor dancing, uh, and they couldn't have been too far close, too far from her because uh, she kept, uh trying to motion them back to the table because the credit card that she had gave the uh waiter or whatnot it kept declining and she finally came to the realization after la la milan picked up the tab for them that she had gave them her bloomingdale's call <laughs> but i was like and that that waiter must have been high or drunk too because once he had gave me a Bloomingdale's car like no man we, we we are not shopping for clothes we're not shopping for shoes or jewelry i need a true credit card <laughs> so that probably show how Sherry was a little bit uh under the weather like she had too many drinks you know fruity drinks going around where it had impaired her a little bit okay then she meets with um uh, a dog collector uh where it's a black owned organization um, I think the young lady is in college or graduated from college, and she made a whole line of, of um, what was it? Uh, African American dolls that have the different textures of hair, and you could actually wash the dolls' hair. They give you the little components that you can make believe, but this is like real life. They go in and try to wash their dolls' hair, and then let it dry, and you can roll it up and all that kind of stuff. So that was that was neat. I said, damn, what she was when I was a little girl. Because I had little white little dolls, too. It didn't matter, because we just wanted a doll. We didn't really get into race and all of that. Of course, you know what I'm saying. I was a 68 baby. My, that's the year I was born, so we didn't care. We just wanted a doll. And, and it didn't matter what kind it was. You know, we saw it was dressed up. It was pretty. Um, we got it. But it was no really dolls out there for black Americans or brown uh, individuals. So, that was cute. That's her right there. Um, like I said, she has to be still in college. Or she graduated from college just recently. And she was uh, doing a lot of research with the dolls. And, uh, you know, she said she had to do a lot. You know, and you got it's not for the faint at heart. You got to be uh, true to yourself that you want this business of making dolls to uh, come true. So, she tells about her struggles, her um uh, pitfalls that she had to maneuver through and navigate through and you know doing a lot of research on her own but she finally got the products to where it was working how she had wanted them to hey how many times this thing gonna do this 
Um, and she finally got the right mixture, and she brought the line to fruition. And of course, she was saying, "Well, we ain't had no dog look like us like that." And you know, <laughs> that was a comedian side coming out. I like to save a share, share. We, you know, we didn't have it in our childhood, but it's okay. We we making it. We making it, girl. And with entrepreneurs such as this young lady, um, trying to make things for us by us, that's real good. I, I really uh, liked it how uh, she did what she had to do to make a dream come true for uh, many, many um, young girls and boys, you know. She might start a men's line, you know what I'm saying? And the boys can have a dog to play with. But she didn't talk too much about that. It was just the girl, the girl's dolls. And then, of course, we had Robin Thicke. He was out and about looking still good. And, you know, he's the lost without you. Can't help myself. How does it feel to know that I love you? So, you know, that song, right? Okay. So, that's what he was there. He was telling her basically what they were do, what he was doing, how his family is, and this, that, and the third. Okay. But without further ado, we will go on and let you listen to little snippets of day three of her show. And again, we're so proud of her because I think, like, um, the first episode it was still good i wouldn't say it was flawless but it, it was really good in the second one which was yesterday she did well and she did professionally well again on day three but we're gonna go into the um the episode or the time she spent with uh robin thick okay Yes. Uh, we came, she had tickets I to see you and and Fantasia. Yes. In concert in L. A. And yes. you got on the piano and you were just shaking it and I was <laughs> screaming and you turned back and you looked. I don't know who you was looking at. I thought you was looking at me. <laughs> of, course, of course, I was looking yeah. at you, Sherry. Of course, I was. I, I literally have to know because I mean we all remember every Robin Thicke song because you're so sexy when you sing. Thank you. Like, like literally. <laughs> When you are singing, Robin, and every woman is screaming, what is going through your mind? Oh, I just don't hit a bad note, I think. <laughs> no, you know, I, I love music. I mean, you know, you and I go way back. Yes. And, and uh, I love making music. I love performing music. It comes from my heart and soul. You know, I come from six generations of family musicians. Yes. My, yeah, my, my mom, Gloria Lloyd. Gloria Lloyd. My mom's. My mom, uh, Gloria Loring, uh, is a singer and songwriter. My father was a singer and songwriter, and my grandfather was a jazz trumpet player. And so, so we go way back in the, in the music family. Man, and, okay, and one more question when you're in concert. When you're looking, I can't tell when you're looking. I swear you was looking at me when you were singing. I'm always but looking. Then, what, yeah, but there was a girl behind me, and I said, he looking at me. She was like, no, he looking at me. We almost got into a fight oh. at the concert. <laughs> Who do you guys look at when you're on stage? What do you fixate on? Like, what do I need to wear a certain thing? Do I need to throw something at you? What? Well, that, that always helps, you know, throw something. <laughs> I used to get hit a lot with things, you know? <laughs> I remember sometimes things would land on the microphone, too. Oh, my you know? God. Well, I'm not going to throw underwear, because I had those big hanes her way. It would knock you out. OK, and that was the one with her with um robin thick and like you like you can hear she was slaying every little bit of it now we're going to let her let um her tell us about her credit card issue and the debacklement that she felt the embarrassment but let's go pure leaf says no to settling oh well that's a commercial hold on you guys, I have to tell y'all what happened to me the other night here in New York. It's just experience after experience. So my girlfriend, Lala Milan, was in town. And um, this is my girlfriend. Now, Lala is a social media influencer and a, an amazing businesswoman. And she was here with celebrity makeup artist Christine. And because they're young millennials, I took them out. But they're young. You know, they want to just party and party. So I called my producer, my super producer, Patrick, right here. So... <laughs> Patrick, who's my super producer, so don't be trying to take them, uh, Jennifer Hudson. Leave them alone. <laughs> 
So I called Patrick about where where do the young people hang out because he's always on the scene and he's about their age. So you know, let me tell you something. Auntie Sherry's usually in the house by and in bed at about eight eight thirty. So Patrick had us go to the spot in Harlem called Corner Social. We came. We were at Corner Social, and it was so good. The music was bumping. The people, it was, I think, I don't even know how many French 75 drinks I had. <laughs> it was so nice. So this is probably why I'm smiling in that photo so hard, because I just don't remember how many. It just, we was just drinking and loud. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we were. We had a good time. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm going, I'm on this talk show. I've got to get home. i got to go to bed. And uh, the bill comes. And because I have a talk show, I guess everybody look at me, you know, when, the, like, not one of these people, not one of these three people, who all got a job, mind you, now one of these three people was like, you know, we can split the bill, Sherry. They just, all of a sudden, everybody just starts twerking. Just, they're dancing, they're twerking. Nobody paying attention, so I was like, you know, it, I got the talk show, I got it. So I grab it, I give it my credit card to the waiter, and uh, the waiter comes back a few minutes later, and he whispers in my ear, uh, Miss Shepard, you call <laughs> And the restaurant was so loud. I know, Marco, the restaurant was so loud. I said, what? And he was like, so, so, so. And I said, what? And he said, your card has been declined. <laughs> And literally, like, that's like you. I don't know if anybody like me, every time I hand my credit card, I'm always going, please let this card go through. Like, it's just always like you know it's going to go through, but it's just always that thing in the back where you like, please don't let it be. Damn it, it got declined. And I was so shocked. I went into uh, Anna Sorkin when she played Anna Delvey. Literally, he said it was declined. I went, what? What? And I said, do you know who I am? <laughs> and I would have said, call my father. Except my father, I take care of my daddy. So <laughs> I was like, what? And I said, run it again. Run the credit card again. I don't know where the accent came. <laughs> Anna Delvey. Yeah, oh, my little Anna Delvey impression. Wonderful. If you haven't seen it, it's Inventing Anna on Netflix. It's amazing. And I said, run the credit card again. He ran it again. He came back. He said it's still declined. And then they're not as nice anymore. And it was like, you know, he, we need another form of payment. So I look over to Patrick because he's my super producer. Patrick, it's showing what you was doing. You did Patrick oh, dropping like ah. Patrick is twerking. He, he's twerking. Looking at and, and his back is to me as he's twerking and dropping it like it's hot. And I kept trying to tap him to say my credit card declined, but you know, super producer didn't want nothing to do with me. <laughs> And meanwhile, they're sitting there about ready to call the police because we'd have ordered so much food. So, uh, Patrick, I don't know. What were you thinking when they declined my card? You saw everything that happened. I mean, two thoughts, actually. One, I was like, she's the boss, so she's <gasps> clearly rich. <laughs> and then I was about to do the church walk and say, she broke, so I got to go. <laughs> and walk right on home. I mean, yes, I do. The talk show does say Sherry, but I, they haven't given me my paycheck yet. I don't have. <laughs> I guess when before you start taking out staffers and the crew, you got to explain. I didn't get my paycheck yet. So, but it, it, well, I and Lala thankfully ended up paying the bill, and I know she was thinking Auntie Sherry's got nothing. <laughs> Lala paid the bill. But you guys, this is what's so embarrassing. I looked at the card when the waiter brought back the card and slapped it on the table. It wasn't my credit card. I had given him my Bloomingdale's card. <laughs> Now, that was crazy. But like I said, Sherry had to be half lit, feeling real good when um, that actually happened. And let me see if I can find another one for our um, pleasure. Let's see what this hey, is. Hey, me. Your skin. Sun cleansers get us clean. Do you know who I am? And 
I would have said, call my father, except my father, I take care of my daddy. So <laughs> I was like, what? And I said, run it again. Run the credit card again. I don't know where the accent came. <laughs> Yeah, oh, my little Anna Delvey impression. Wonderful. If you haven't seen it, it's Inventing Anna on Netflix. It's amazing. And I said, run the credit card again. He ran it again. He came back. He said, it's still declined. And then they're not as nice anymore. And it was like, you know, he, we need another form of payment. So I look over to Patrick, because he's my super producer. Patrick, it's showing what you was doing. You did Patrick oh, dropping bad. like Patrick is working. He, he's working. And his back is to me as he's twerking and dropping it like it's hot. And I kept trying to tap him to say my credit card declined. But, you know, super producer didn't want nothing to do with me. <laughs> and meanwhile, they're sitting there about ready to call the police because we'd have ordered so much food. So, uh, Patrick, I don't know. What were you thinking when they declined my card? You saw everything that happened. I mean, two thoughts, actually. One, I was like, she's the boss, so she's clearly rich. <laughs> And then I was about to do the church walk and say, she broke, so I got to go. <laughs> and walk right on home. I mean, yes, I do. The talk show does say Sherry, but I, they haven't given me my paycheck yet. I don't have. <laughs> I guess when before you start taking out staffers and the crew, you got to explain. I didn't get my paycheck yet. So, but it, it, well, I and Lala thankfully ended up paying the bill. And I know she was thinking, Auntie Sherry's got nothing. <laughs> Lala paid the bill. But you guys, this is what's so embarrassing. I looked at the card when the waiter brought back the card and slapped it on the table. It wasn't my credit card. I had given him my Bloomingdale's card. I don't know how. 75s. I know, I didn't even know how, but you know, here's the thing. If we was at Bloomingdale's, the card would have got declined too. So I just want to tell the waiter at Corner Social that thinks that I'm a broke talk show host that that was my Bloomingdale's card. And um, and I want to thank Lala Milan. Thank you, my friend, for taking care of the bill. I appreciate you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So embarrassing. So embarrassing. I got to ask y'all a question. Uh, clap if you can see yourself living with an ex. Oh, damn. I think that was a pity clap. You just... You can live with your ex, ma'am? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, I, that makes me wonder because I couldn't do it. And I was wondering about this because Real Housewives of Potomac star Ashley Darby is doing just that. So Ashley revealed that she recently bought a house with her estranged husband, Michael, even though they have an impending divorce. Now, I don't know. John, this sounds good if you pitch in an 80s sitcom. Yeah. Like you want to... <laughs> Live together, but you know, living with your ex, you had an impending divorce. That sounds like an episode on Dateline. Very much, very much, Sherry, very much. Yeah, because on Dateline, this is how people get hurt. They're living together, then something all of a sudden you you can't find the wife, she has disappeared, and then you got the ten year old talking about daddy rolled mommy up in the carpet. <laughs> And it's so funny because I, I did watch What Happens Live, one episode with uh, Ashley Darby, and I remember her husband, Michael, was there. They had just had a baby. I, and um, I, But this is the guy who grabbed a cameraman's butt, d didn't, he? Yeah. didn't he? Did he do anything else? Very strange couple. He also got caught in a hotel in his underwear with a stripper. Oh, oh that's okay. And who don't get caught in a hotel in their underwear with a stripper? I mean, really? So I'm trying to figure out, if this man did all of that, why would you want to buy a house with him? For really, literally, uh, John, home is where your ex lives. That's too long to put on a welcome mat. That's really, <laughs> it's crazy. I'm, and you know what I got to say? I say, Ashley, good luck. Try it if you want to. As well as say, daddy roll mommy up in the carpet. <laughs> I don't like doom and gloom. I don't like none of that. I don't like nothing living with the ex. You cut it off, go. But there's a new British survey that reveals blue collar workers make the best lovers. What? The blue collar. What you, Marco? Look at you. Ah! That was some, that was one of them. Well, blue collar workers. I don't know. Everybody's surprised at this, except the porn industry. They always have blue collar workers <laughs> in the thing. But li literally, the survey says that plaster workers make the best lovers. I don't really. I, well, that's a plaster worker. I, I don't. I can't think of what would make a plaster worker sexy. Like I think of uh, Patrick Swayze and Ghost when they were doing like, you know, yeah, they were doing that. Yeah. That. Clay
claymation scene. I don't, maybe the plaster would throw his cock on me. Wait, what? Like he would yeah. throw his cock. Uh, okay. The plaster worker. It's, it's daytime, Sherry. We don't no. need anybody pushing the no, button. No, he would throw his cock. I mean, the L is silent. Oh, yo. okay. All right. The L is Careful. silent. Jeez, I'm not trying to get the show canceled. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, we got to get off the plaster. I'm not understanding him. But this electricians came in second. Oh. Okay, first of all, can somebody. <laughs> See the hands. First of all, can somebody clap if you've ever had an electrician that looked like this? Okay, thank you. In all my life of paying for my electricity, or sometimes I like to call it getting my electricity cut off, I have never, ever had somebody come to my house that looked like this. Usually the electricians that come to my house, they look like those old plumbers. Because they, when they got to bend down, their butt crack is showing because they turn this stuff off. Because that's what they do when they cut that wire and they put the wire over your little thing. And, and, you know, and they're always old because electricians never retire. They die right on their job. So I've never seen a young electrician. I always get an old electrician named Woodrow. He, oh Woodrow. Yeah, Woodrow always comes. I mean, you call something need fixing. <laughs> and then number three, they had uh, teachers. They had teachers as number three. Now, yes, clap. Now this, the, the, I can agree with the teachers because you always remember. Y'all remember that one cute teacher you used to have back in high school that you had a crush on? I'm not talking about the old teacher that was really gross that had the chin, the long chin hair and the chin, the, the nose hairs, the you know the hair. And his name was Mr. Lawrence. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about, like, for me, my cute teacher was my Spanish teacher. Oh, my gosh. And I remember his name was Senor. You know what? I'm not going to tell you because that's the answer to my security question. So I can't tell you. But I'm telling you, as soon as he walked into the room, I knew every word of Spanish. Oh, my gosh. Mi espalda tiene un dolor. Y mi espalda. I'm not sure. <laughs> now, strangely, accountants come in at number 10. Uh, not, I, I'm not sure about this. Now, my mom always said you should marry an accountant because they're boring, but they get the job done. They're good with their money. They're good with a pen. You know, accountants sound boring. I don't even, I don't even have anything for accountants. Do you think, well, y'all, accountants, you think sexy? Clap if you think, yeah. We don't, we don't think about that one. I'm going to go on. I'm going to tell y'all, you know I love wigs. I love wigs. But what I love more are the wig fails. So I got a segment called, Can You Wig It? Can You Wig It? Now. So there is this giant slide in Detroit that is going viral. Now, instead of sliding down easily, people are bumping and crashing down. First of all, this slide looks like you're going to get hemorrhoids, okay? It literally, it looks like, I don't understand, they look like popcorn kernels just coming down. Now this, th what happened to the good old-fashioned carpet? Remember you got on the carpet and you just slid down? So this one woman slid down so hard, she lost her wig. Lost, she's sliding, she's sliding, the wig. shot that they always catch when you're going? Did they catch the woman with no wig or did they catch the wig itself? Which, which camera shot, John? And I'm thinking to myself, you know those signs at the beginning of the rides and the, the disclaimers and they say you need to be this tall to ride the ride or they say flashing lights may cause seizures. They need to put a sign there that says if you dare to ride this, you will probably lose your hair. <laughs> Oh, my God. I don't know. Maybe they should change the name of the ride to Willow Smith because it whips your hair back and forth. I don't know. <laughs> so, y'all, look, don't go anywhere because up next from the mass Singer, Robin Thicke is here. <laughs> okay. And that was pretty much it for the Sherry Shepherd Show, day three. We will be back tomorrow. Well, it's tomorrow on my time. 
I will be back with day four. Okay, so let's keep watching her show. Let's keep making those ratings go up. And I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.